Hello, you're watching Head to Head, and I'm Alas Gajduk. On the 10th of December, the world marked Human Rights Day. On this day, 70 years ago, the United Nations adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. For the occasion, the UN Human Rights Mission presented its work in Ukraine, in particular in the Donbass conflict zone. To talk more about observing the most important human values in Ukraine and specifically on the occupied territories of Ukraine, we welcome to the studio today Irina Yakovleva, communication specialist at the UN Human Rights Monitoring Mission. Hello and thank you for being a guest today in our studio. Hello and thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. So what did the year 2018, what did this year bring us on the battlefield for human rights in Ukraine, in Ukrainian realities? Thank you for the question. We are indeed about to um, finish this year and to enter 2019. And it is indeed a time to, um, to make some major conclusions with regards to the human rights situation. Um, of course, the major uh, thing that affects human rights situation in Ukraine is the active uh, armed conflict uh, in, the, in the East. Um, this year we saw a decrease in uh, civilian casualties. Uh, and though this is a positive development, we see that uh, uh, people still get hurt, people still get killed in the conflict zone, and uh, we, we indeed say that it is still active armed conflict, conflict. that affects lives of um, um, a couple of millions of people, uh, mm -hmm. actually. Um, while our big attention is uh, in the eastern area, we observe human rights situation uh, throughout the country. Uh, and um, uh, this year we saw the increase of attacks against journalists, against civil society activists. We all know that uh, uh, there were repeated violent attacks against uh, Roma settlements also throughout the country. Uh, this is something that we are concerned with, especially with regards to the upcoming election in 2019 and 20. And um, one of our key recommendations to the government is to pay attention to this situation, ensure timely, effective and transparent investigations in all cases of, uh, of, attacks, when we, of attacks when we speak about uh, civic and democratic space. What about this the situation right now? Is there any investigation how law enforcement bodies are interested in this cases? Uh, investigations have been opened in all cases. Investigations are ongoing. Uh, we as a human rights monitoring mission in Ukraine, together with civil society, we do cooperate and we do follow these investigations together with the government of Ukraine. Um, the, there was some progress, for example, uh, after the attacks against Roma settlements, initially in uh, certain cases. Um, the criminal cases were launched, but they were qualified as hooliganism, mm -hmm. while we, together with our international partners, partners from civil society, insisted that the cases, criminal cases... Could be qualified as discrimination. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And in some cases we, we saw that this did happen, so this is a positive step. Of course... So some of the cases were qualified as discrimination and some of them were qualified as hooliganism, yes? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, and uh, so, as I said, and as we all know, investigations are ongoing. And again, m um, more needs to be done to ensure that perpetrators are brought to account, because we always say that accountability is a key issue and impunity only creates um, more more crimes, more attacks. So that's why accountability is a key issue today mm -hmm. in Ukraine. Well, okay, law enforcement bodies, I, I hope that they are going to be more interested in these cases, but what about Ukrainian legislation? How very much well thought out is our legislation to counter this, uh, well, this, this crimes? Uh, Offenses. It, yeah, it uh, it depends. We actually now, when we uh, when we are about to enter a new year, we actually prepared um, uh, several documents, kind of summarized the the situation, the developments also in in the legislation, and we have prepared the list of seven positive developments that the, uh, that happened in Ukraine with regards to uh -huh. specifically legislation uh, that affects human rights, and we prepared seven key recommendations for the government for the next year. Why seven? It's a symbolic in the indication and uh, um, um, with the 70 years of Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So we kind of decided to, okay. for, to center okay. our uh -huh. uh, summary of analysis around this number seven. Uh, I will name just, uh, just a few as for the 
positive thing, uh, you know, that the law on missing persons uh, was adopted, um, enforced disappearance was criminalized uh, as a crime. We also saw some development on the issue of um, payment of pensions to uh, residents of eastern areas on both sides of the contact line. We saw this emblematic decision of the Sup Supreme Court. Uh, of Ukraine. Also, if we speak about internally displaced person, persons, um, a decision was made that gave IDPs, internally displaced persons, IDPs equal rights to apply for social housing in Ukraine. This, uh, this was not the case before. Um, if I may now speak a little bit about the recommendations. Uh, first of all, the domestic violence, this is the, an, an important issue. Domestic uh, violence was criminalized finally in Ukraine, right? Uh, well, still the ratification of Istanbul Convention is pending and uh, we okay. hope that this issue will also be resolved in, uh, in, in the next year. Our partners from uh, uh, UN Women, this is another UN agency, are actively on, on this issue with, uh, mm -hmm. with the government So it's of not Ukraine. criminalized yet, it's still in the process of well, being the, criminalized. The International Convention, the key International Convention, uh, Istanbul Convention is, has, has still not been ratified by Ukraine, but uh, we see that there is a, a certain political will to, to do this, and we hope okay. that this will happen. That's important that there is political will. Okay, what about our recommendations, seven recommendations for Ukraine? Uh, well, actually, uh, uh, we have much more. As you know, <laughs> as you may know, every three months we prepare public reports about the human rights situation in, in Ukraine that covers uh, all country, including uh, uh, territories affected by the armed conflict, including Crimea, because we operate um, according to UN General Assembly resolution that asserts territorial integrity of Ukraine. Um, so, and each report uh, finishes with the whole list of recommendations to all the uh, parties of the conflict, to the government of Ukraine, to the Russian Federation, when uh, with regards to uh, Crimea. So, this seven is just a summary of um, of our observation. First, and the key recommendation we have for 2019. Um, is about civilian victims of the conflict and it's about the mechanism of compensation, be it for uh, damaged or ruined property in the hostilities or be it for um the loss of a relative, for example, if uh, there is a family where um, a family member was killed or injured in the hostilities, the family should receive, uh, there should be a mechanism that a family can receive compensation. Uh, if a person was injured, him or herself, also this person should be entitled to uh, to a compensation for... Uh, so there is no compensation yet? After there, is no, uh, there is no mechanism of, of compensation, again, for okay. property and for uh, physical, uh, for physical uh, injuries or for loss of a relative. There was some progress on this uh, uh, on this in this year um, however mostly the decisions that were made um, the steps that were made they um, they were focused on those living on government controlled territory while we say that there should be an encompassing non-discriminatory mechanism and all victims of the conflict, regardless of where they live in Ukraine, should be eligible for this compensation. Because in the end of the day, we fully acknowledge the challenges that the government is facing these difficult years, armed conflict, occupation of Crimea, but still it is the government of Ukraine that is responsible to guarantee and protect human rights for all people of Ukraine, wherever they live in the country. Mm -hmm. But how would you assess, you keep the dialogue with the government of Ukraine, is there enough of this political will to, to bring these changes in the upcoming 2019 year? Could we expect that this situation with uh, observance of human rights will, will, will develop? I think it's important to say that we are here, the UN Human Rights Monitoring Mission in Ukraine is in the country upon the invitation of the government. Mm -hmm. And um, it's actually a rare case when the government uh, is, inviting. is inviting the human rights mission while it is facing uh, such difficulties. Uh, again, armed conflict, occupation of Crimea, and so on and so on. Uh, so we are we we appreciate this very much, and we indeed have an open and constructive dialogue with uh, uh, with the government. Uh, sometimes we would wish that the progress is is faster and the reforms are more human rights based, but. Uh, we do see that the government is uh, is ready for the dialogue, and uh, the recommendations that we make are um, are accepted. 
um, they are on the desks of the officials and we see that there is a certain a certain progress. And if this national legislation is um, well is not effective enough, could we use international law in Ukraine? Could we use, for example, this uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights adopted by the United Nations 70 years ago? Could we use this in, in Ukrainian courts, for example, in some cases? Well, definitely. Would it, uh, would it be legitimate to use this document? Uh, well, first of all, uh, we need to understand that Universal Declaration of Human Rights, as well as other key uh, international human rights instruments, as we call them, it's uh, um, uh, covenants, conventions, for example, ICCPR, it's International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Um, all these documents are a part of Ukrainian legislation. So Ukraine has ratified a number so of active. key documents, so they are... Um, they are they are applied here what is also important to to note as i said about our public reports about the recommendations well the 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 evidence that that are presented in our reports are actually also used in courts uh, by lawyers and also the judges from time to time in odessa in kharkiv in kramatorsk they do refer to findings from our reports uh, while uh, making certain decisions on this case mm -hmm. well it's such a pity that we run out of time because we have so much to discuss more but i thank you for participation in this fight against uh, discrimination and uh, uh, human rights abuse in ukraine and also for the contribution to a better change. Thank yes. you. That was Irina Yakovleva, communication specialist at the UN Human Rights Monitoring Mission. Thank you for watching Head to Head and stay tuned for more with UATV.